Hello everyone, how are you? I hope everybody's doing well. This is yours truly, Tech Gear Guy. On this channel, typically I feature laptops or other technology items that may be more geared towards business environment, but uh, along with the last episode, which I'll link right here, which was the back to school technology for 2017, this episode is is featuring a laptop that is not necessarily business oriented. This is actually one of the laptops that I mentioned during the aforementioned back to school tech gear guide. Um, this is one of the laptops from that episode and it is actually the one that I have purchased for my own two children. Um, they were using Chromebook entirely for the last school year, but this school year, as they're getting to high school sophomore and high school junior, I'm getting them, a few, getting them full featured Windows laptops for a couple different things. And the reason why this particular model uh, spoke to me was because of its value proposition. Obviously, spec-wise, there's nothing to write home about. Nothing special going on here. However, with the price that they're charging, at Best Buy, this is right now available for $349. Now, of course, I would not touch this laptop with a 10-foot pole if the uh, sticker price is what's being charged, which is like a $640. No way in hell you would spend that kind of money on a laptop with this spec. But at $349, it's a, not a bad deal. So let's take a look. So inside, what you will see is a 7th generation Intel KB Lake i3 7100U CPU running at 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, trusted platform module on board. Uh, the memory is 8 gigabytes DDR4 SD RAM clocking it at 2133 megahertz. And the inside, the storage duty is being handled by a one terabyte drive. So again, right now, just by that, it sounds all reasonable enough. Um, KB Lake i3, great. Eight gigabytes of RAM, more than plenty for rudimentary productivity work. One terabyte of hard drive, that sounds all great until you find out it's a 5400 RPM. Of course, corner it had to be cut somewhere in order to meet that price point. Um, so that is one of the big downer on this laptop. And then um, the screen is 15.6 inches, 1366 by 768 resolution driven by Intel HD 620. Again, nothing to write home about, especially the resolution 1366 by 768 is one of the most horrendous resolution you could get on the screen. However, it is a touch sensitive uh, screen, so my kids can use the touch screen on the laptop and the screen is bright and it's very crisp looking. One of the things that Dell usually gets right is their display which I don't actually care for much of their other things, but the monitors and uh, screens on their laptops are actually usually pretty dang good. I won't go into details of its <clears throat> brightness or color gamut and how accurate the color representations are, because if you're one of those that care about those things, you would not be looking at laptops in this price range anyways. So with that said, um, the build is actually not bad at all for a laptop that you could get for $349. It's, um, the, there is a bit of a lid flex. Yeah, okay. And then, but the hinges are very solid. It is actually impossible almost to open with the one hand. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the screen is really nice. There is a bezel, pretty decent sized bezel but on the base, you have kind of a matching uh, spare room there, margin on both sides. However, with the 15.6 inches dimension, it does give you a full number pad on the keypad. So that's really nice. And then, even though it's basically all plastic construction, um, with a little textured exterior, both on the uh, top of the lid, as well as where your palms would go, 
I wouldn't say quite premium feel because it ain't that. However, it doesn't feel as cheap and just basic. So I do like the way they have this outfitted. The feel it it's really nice to the touch is what I would um, what I would say. And then as far as the dimensions concerned, it's 15 inches this way, 10.2 inches this way, 0.9 inches um, as far as the height is concerned, and a solid five pounder. So with that, um, let's go into a little bit more details about the laptop. The Wi-Fi module is another one of the downers along with the 5400 RPM hard drive. It is only capable of, it's 802.11n. So you could get it on the uh, B and the G and the N, 2.4 gigahertz network. So if you or Wi-Fi is in a place where you have a lot of other competing 2.4 gigahertz equipment, whether that's Wi-Fi or microwave or cordless phone, you will be susceptible to some interference, which means uh, degrading performance as well as the, um, the range that would be that would suffer a bit. And then uh, Bluetooth is um, Bluetooth LE 4.0 and um, audio, it's just a real tech audio driver, nothing really special. Speakers are bottom front firing. They're okay, they're a little fizzy, but it's okay for occasional YouTube watching, any sort of um, productivity work or school homework type of a situation, more than plenty. Does get loud enough for you to um, be able to consume media so that's that and what else so um, I would tell you you know for a value driven laptop the keyboard is really a pleasure to type on the island the chiclet style keyboard uh, spill proof as they say I don't know if that's really truthful uh, but I'm not about to spill a glass of water on there but um, being that this will be handled by my uh, kids I guess that's an added assurance. But the attack, the feel, and the feedback on the keyboard is extremely pleasant to type on. So, you know, as my kids are writing essays or a long thesis, I'm, I'm sure that will come in handy. The trackpad, it's a snap fixer driver, but the, the feel is very nice. It does the track reasonably well. It's not super smooth as far as the surface is concerned. It actually does have a bit of texture there, which I actually prefer than just a flat out, flat surface, uh, flat smooth surface, like um, the ones found on MacBook Pros, the surface stuff. So that's, as far as the input is concerned, there's no uh, backlit keyboard or anything like that. So um, that is that, and what else? And the battery, with the screen brightness full tilt, Wi-Fi firing, I have it clocking in right around three hours and 15 to 30 minutes, depending on how intense your work is concerned. So it's not an all day laptop, it's a half day laptop. But luckily the um, power adapter, if you have to carry it around, is not very big. And, um, the thermal management wise, it's a plenty, uh, plenty fine. Um, I, I, it, even if you have it on a lap after work, uh, using it for a couple of hours, doing whatever intense this laptop can push, you're not gonna get any sweaty or anything like that. So with that, let's kind of start summarizing everything. What I like about this laptop, obviously it's the bang for the buck of value proposition. You are getting a lot of a laptop for $349. Again, it is not something you will pay $640 for, which is it's a sticker price, but with the uh, price of $349, it is a great buy. And for a $349 price tag, it is built reasonably well. And the display is nice, um, the, the touch panel is responsive, so nothing to fault for there. And being a 15.6 inch laptop, it does not get too big or thick or heavy, so that is also very nice. And abundance of ports is also very nice. So, so you are getting a full ethernet jack, that's a heat vent, HDMI, USB 3.0, two of them on this side. And then on this side, you have an optical drive, which is 
again, I don't know when I saw an optical drive on the laptop last, but it is here. It's a DVD um, RW and USB 3.0 audio jack and secure digital card slot. So that is all good. And um, the input device, as I mentioned earlier, the keyboard and mouse being very, uh, not mouse, the keyboard and the trackpad being very, us um, very usable also adds value to this laptop. What I don't like, well, obviously the 5400 RPM hard drive performance is extremely dismal. Worst case scenario, that is something user serviceable, so I could just pop the oh, pop the cover and just replace it with a solid state at some point if the speed comes into play. Does give you plenty of storage at one terabyte, um, but again, uh, if the if you have a lot of uh, in, read and write speed dependent type of work, then that hard drive issue will come into play. Wi-Fi only being 2.4 gigahertz compatible also is a downer. Uh, don't necessarily see that as a uh, showstopper. So uh, that's that. And as I showed you on the uh, ports, there's a, at least with the, the size, they don't have to cut corner on the ports. So they did give you a lot of ports. However, what is missing is a USB type C. And let's see, it does come with out of the box some crapware, um, especially the Dell ones. I mean, there's just Dell this, Dell that. I mean, so I had to disable all those services to at least to, to reallocate some of the system resources. But the crapware situation is not negligible. I've seen worse though, so it's not all that terribly bad. Um, so that pretty much does it for pros and cons of the laptop that I would uh, talk about. So overall, 350 bucks, not bad. My kids will use it for a year, a couple years, who knows. So that pretty much wraps up for this episode featuring Dell Inspiron 3000, specific model number 3567. By the way, if you opt for the exact same thing without the touch screen, you save another $50. So there you go. That's it. Until next episode, everyone take care and I'll see you next time.